Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Please don't mind the mess back here. I just filmed a shopping haul unboxing video of a bunch of supplies that I bought and um, yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> so I can't really fit all of it in the room without getting it in the shot, so I apologize, but it just, it is what it is. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the essential items that you should have as a reptile keeper. And these are just a list of 10 because 10 is like a catchy number when you have a title. So like, you wouldn't say the 13 most essential items for a reptile keeper, right? You say 10, uh, but there probably is more than 10. And if you feel like I've left anything essential off the list, you can leave them down below. I have no problem with that. And if you aren't using some of the things on this list and you feel like guilty about it, you feel sad about it because you didn't know, don't feel bad. We have literally all made mistakes, every single one of us. There are some things on this list that I did not know I needed in the beginning or didn't know that would be super helpful in the beginning. So this video is just to help anybody out. It is not to be like, wow, I can't believe you didn't use this. Like, I'm not like that. Everybody makes mistakes and, and growth and development is an important part of keeping reptiles. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now these are in no particular order. So it's not like number one is the most desired spot of a thing you should have and number 10 is the least. No, they're not in any order, they're just thrown down at random. So the first one is a temperature gun or an infrared thermometer gun. So basically, it's a little gun and it has like a little trigger and when you pull it, a little laser pops out and it tells you what the temperature is of that area. It's super important to have these like when it comes to checking temperatures in your reptile enclosures, but it's not the only type of thermometer you should have. Like a lot of people use like a, a stationary thermometer in their enclosure to help measure ambient temperatures, but an infrared thermometer is really, really important and helpful when it comes to measuring temperatures. And I definitely recommend getting one, especially if you use like an under tank heater or if you have like a basking spot and you want to determine the exact temperature of that exact spot. It's the best tool for determining that. They're not super expensive. You can find them online. I've never seen them in stores, but I've never looked for them in stores because I just buy stuff online. So um, I think Amazon's probably the, the easiest place to get one from. Number two is a thermostat. So a thermostat is not something I realized that people needed in the beginning. I was using uh, under tank heaters without a thermostat. These are thermostats on the wall right here. If you hear clicking in my video on occasion, that's the thermostat turning off when it has finally reached that um, heat temperature that it needs to be at. So uh, a thermostat basically just controls the uh, heat that is put out by your under tank heater. Um, and they're just super, super important. And I feel like it's really easy to overlook them, especially like a few years ago when not people didn't talk about them as much. Um, but they are essential in my mind. That's why they're on this list. Basically, they have a little probe and you place the probe on top of the heater and then you put down your substrate or whatever you're going to put down. Um, and then voila, you have your heat spot and you set your thermostat to what you'd like your under tank heater to be. So like for a leopard gecko, people say 89 to 90 is about the right temperature. So you would set your under tank heater at that in the thermostat and then it'll make sure that that never gets too hot to burn your gecko and that it always stays at like the appropriate temperature it should be. One way you can check and make sure that that heater and that thermostat are working is by using an infrared thermometer gun, which we mentioned as number one, um, because you can measure the temperature that it's putting off at. There will sometimes be a couple degrees difference um, because the thermostat is going to like reach a threshold of 90 degrees and then it's going to drop down and so it'll be a couple degrees cooler and then it'll, it'll heat back up to 90, but it'll always be in that range or it should always be in that range if it's functioning properly. Now there are cheap thermostats and they work great if you just are using like a, a small amount of heat. Um, but if you have like, you know, a really large rack system, you're going to want to use something that's much nicer, like a herbstat or, or like a professional one that has a lot of different outlets. Now, thermostats can get pretty pricey. Uh, the small ones are fine, but like if you have a lot of them uh, on one outlet, like the herbstat ones, they can be hundreds of dollars, but they're worth it because they're quality. I 
I also recommend as a number three having uh, backup heat sources and backup thermostats because they can and will just die on you or stop functioning at any time and so instead of like having to wait to have one shipped to you or to go out and buy one if you have a spare on hand that's great now this is not going to work if like a bunch of yours die at once for example but if you just have one that dies it, it's perfect in fact i had my uh fire skinks under tank heater die randomly one day and i was looking at the thermostat and the thermostat was super low because it wasn't able to reach that heat threshold because it wasn't working anymore so then i just swapped out the heater because i had an extra and it was really great it doesn't really happen too often that the equipment will fail on you but it definitely is a possibility Another one that is like a spare option is having a spare enclosure or a quarantine enclosure. Now this one is kind of essential in my mind because you have to have a quarantine enclosure when you have like new reptiles or new amphibians or new any kind of animal coming into the house. Um, but having a spare enclosure like to have uh, in case you're working on their enclosure, like if you're upgrading it or if you're building a DIY background in it or if you're cleaning it, having an enclosure to put that animal in where it can be safe uh, and, and secure while you're working on that is, is really helpful. I, and I have like a number of aquariums sitting up there in the closet that I have time and time again relied on in those situations. Tongs. So another one that I find super helpful is having tongs. I have large bamboo tongs and I have small metal ones. Um, they're just really invaluable. Like you will always find a way to use tongs, especially when it comes to reptiles because you have to pick up the insects from whatever container you have them in. If you breed them and have like a big setup, then you got to pick them up with tweezers. I mean, you can use your fingers, but a lot of people don't want to offer their fingers to their hungry reptile, they'd rather offer the insect on tongs so they don't get bit. I personally find tongs super useful because my enigmas and a lot of my like special needs geckos have to be tong fed. And when I use smaller tongs, sometimes they can mess and get my finger. So having really big tongs has been great because I haven't been bitten in a while. <laughs> I also really enjoy tong feeding my reptiles just because of the fact that they'll associate you with food and then therefore they will not like be fearful of you. My fire skink has actually come around to not hating me because my fire skink now associates me with food. So I'll see my fire skin come out for doobie roaches or superworms or hornworms, which is really great. And I am finding a lot of joy in feeding them, you know, live insects off of tongs. Because for the longest time, my fire skink would only eat out of a bowl. So it's really nice to have tongs for that option. All right, so next up is a colony of like feeder insects. So for me, I breed mealworms and I breed doobie roaches. Doobie roaches are, I feel like, the most invaluable, like the best one you could possibly, they're so easy to breed, they're so nutritious, they are so plentiful when they breed. It can take a little while to get it to set up and to like be able to feed out of the colony without injuring the numbers, um, but it's once it's going, it's going and it's great. And it's just great to not have to buy them. So whether or not you can use dubia, because sometimes they're illegal where people live, um, or if you'd rather breed mealworms or superworms, some sort of colony of insects that you've bred on your own, I really recommend because you'll save a lot of money. And also it's easier than having to like wait for um, like insects to be shipped in. Like imagine if it's winter time and they're not shipping insects because it's too cold where you live. If you have a colony, you don't have to worry about that. You'll never run out of feeders because you'll just be able to get them right out of your bin and feed them to your animals. Another great thing about that is you can get them at all different sizes. So like I use full grown dubia to feed to my beardy. I use medium to large ones to feed to my fire skink. I feed medium ones to my leopard geckos. I feed small ones to my frogs and to my my Chinese cave gecko and I feed small ones to Fugaku, my red-eyed crocodile skink. I mean, just to be able to have the size variant is just, is amazing. So this is definitely one that I recommend for people, especially if you have more than one reptile. Like if you only have one, I can see how it's not feasible to breed a whole bunch unless you know you have um, like a business in selling them. Like maybe you breed a bunch and then you just sell whatever you don't use, which is definitely an option. Um, I can see it not being as easy or as like a a good option if you only have a couple reptiles but if you have a lot of reptiles and amphibians it's definitely something I recommend
Next up is a spray bottle because a lot of species will require some humidity in their enclosures and the best way to do this is with a spray bottle. And a lot of times you, they'll have ones that are like pressurized so they have like a, a nozzle on the top that you just pump down and it you know fills this entire middle section with water and it just has a nice spray instead of being like a swear it swear it swear it over and over again which is like annoying and exhausting. There's also ones like you can get from like a like a Home Depot or a Lowe's where it's like a huge thing of water and it has like a, a long nozzle and you use it for lawn care but if you just fill it up with water and spray it in the enclosures that works really well too and it holds a lot of water at one time and again it's pressurized so it has a really fine mist. Whether you use that or a spray bottle either way it's definitely something I recommend having. Now another one I think is really great are light timers and this is really great especially if you have diurnal species like a bearded dragon. I think that anybody who has a bearded dragon should have their lights on timers because then your bearded dragon's rhythm will be perfect. It'll Light will come on the same time every day. It's not dependent on whether or not you wake up late or whether or not you're having some issue you know getting around in the morning or at nighttime when it turns off. You never have to think about it. You just plug the, the thing in set the timer to when you want it to come on and come off and it's perfect it does that and then you can also adjust it so that when you know the winter is happening the days are shorter you can adjust your timer to be shorter it's perfect i love it i have timers on all of my lights i have timers on my bearded dragon lights my fire skink lights even just the lights i have over my enclosures to like help plants grow and stuff everything's on a timer because I don't think I could be bothered to walk around and turn all the lights on. So if you have any sort of reptile that has lighting, timers. Get yourself a timer. And also, you don't have to buy the ones that are specifically labeled for reptiles because they're going to be overpriced. Just go to Amazon and look up, like, light timer. And it'll just be, like, this little square thing with a little clock on it that has, like, little tiny notches that you bump up and bump down for a day and night it may take a little bit of tinkering to figure it out but once you do you're set and you don't have to worry about it again until um maybe you lose power and then you'll have to fix it because it'll stop clocking that's the only annoying part about having a timer uh, but other than that they're superb Next up is a calcium and multivitamin powder. So you're gonna want a few different ones. You're gonna want a plain calcium carbonate, you're gonna want a multivitamin, you're gonna want calcium with D3 or calcium with multivitamin. You're gonna want uh, like a, a, a few of them. You're not just gonna want one calcium for every species or one calcium to offer every time. Because sometimes you're gonna wanna just use plain calcium, other times you're gonna wanna use a multivitamin, other times you're gonna wanna use calcium with D3. So you're gonna wanna have a few different options. And those are absolutely essential, without a doubt, because reptiles will develop MBD if not, so you absolutely need them. And last but not least, this is actually one that I don't use and haven't ever had to because of where I live. Look, there's a gecko moving around. That's Marcella. Oh, she's chasing down Jackson like he's food because he walked away. Anyways, so one thing I haven't had to use but I think is important to include in this list because most people will have to use it is a dechlorinator for water. Now I have well water, it comes right up from the ground, it is not treated chemically like by the city, it doesn't have a chlorine in it at all so there's no reason for me to have to dechlorinate it. But a lot of people's water is treated and then it'll have to be treated to be safe for a reptile. So a good dechlorinator would be part of that list of things that are essential. And that's all 10. So if you have any to add, please do down below. If you have any questions, please ask them down below. Leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And hopefully Marcella will be there too, because I'm going to film right after this. <laughs> Bye.